November 1995. I was still working as a picture framer, still dating a woman whose name I can't remember, who worked at the local blood bank, and still reading books. I have no interesting anecdotes, so we're going to jump right into the books that I read in November of 1995. And the first one was Spider-Man, The Lizard Sanction by Diane Duane. That is a book that is collected in this Spider-Man, The Venom Factor omnibus big fat book it is the second book in here and in the story venom is down in the everglades hunting the lizard peter parker is down in florida covering a shuttle launch for the daily bugle and spending some time with his wife mary jane he hears about venom and the lizard fighting and intercedes and he's got some time on his hands because somebody or something scuttles the shuttle launch. And he has to investigate that. How is it all going to tie together? Well, you'd have to read the book to find out. I'm not going to tell you. Uh, the Lizard is my favorite Spider-Man villain. So I'm always excited whenever I can read anything that's got the Lizard in it. Uh, the three books that make up this omnibus that I already tossed over there, so I'm not going to show you the cover again. Uh, they're all standalone, basically, but they do kind of tie together a little bit. I think more than just the fact that Venom is, is in all three. Um, but, yeah, The Lizard Sanction, you can read it by, itself, by yourself, or you can read it as part of a whole. But it's got The Lizard, so you know I'm going to enjoy it. And Diane Duane's a, a great author. Next up, Superstitious by R.L. Stein. I believe this was his first, if not only, adult horror novel. I'm going to have to look at my notes because I do not remember the specifics. I remember my attitude about this book, even from way back when. Uh, let's see. So, you have Liam O'Connor, who is a professor of folklore you have Sarah Morgan, who is, there's a little romance going on between Liam O'Connor and Sarah Morgan, who is a student. Uh, but in this college town, there are murders happening. There's craziness going on. There's weird characters. And there's superstitions. Um, my biggest problem with the book, it, to me, it read like a Goosebumps book with just a bunch of sex thrown in. Maybe some violence. I don't remember how graphic the violence was. But it had the, 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 the Goosebumps types of jump scares that were fake outs. Uh, the one that I, I believe I remember correctly. You know, the memory can be tricky. But there's a scene, I swear they're in, like Liam and Sarah, maybe somebody's in a diner and they're talking about something and a hand slams down on Liam's shoulder or whoever it is. End of chapter. Oh my God, what's happening? Flip the page and it's the person at the table behind them asking if they can borrow the ketchup. Something like that. Uh, so it had those fake out jump scares had a bunch of sex thrown in, if I remember correctly. And, yeah, it just, it read like a, a kid or young adult book, maybe a middle grade book, with sex and violence thrown in to make it an adult book. Uh, again, maybe I should reread it. I think it was a pretty quick read. See if my opinion has changed. But that's how I felt about it back then. If you like R.L. Stein, if you're interested in superstitions, I mean, that part was cool. The All the different superstitions that may or may not be real and have an effect, because there is some, as I said, there's murders going on, there's some crazy evilness going on. Uh, so as they say, your mileage may vary. Book number three is Batman, The Ultimate Evil by Andrew Vax. Holy moly. This is not the copy I read back then. I used to have the hardback. 
Um, but this is the copy I have now. And basically, in this book, Batman goes up against uh, child sex trafficking. Uh, he's dating a woman who, well, Bruce Wayne is dating a woman who deals in this, uh, not in, like, trying to stop it, not, is not a child sex trafficker. And he actually finds out uh, through Alfred that his parents weren't the victims of a random crime. His mother was trying to stop sex trafficking, especially of children. Children's sex trafficking, uh, you know, was compiling all this evidence, doing all of this. And so she and her husband were targeted. And Alfred has all this stuff, and he was told to hand it over to Bruce when the time was right. And so Bruce, uh, I believe, goes undercover as a pedophile uh, to Southeast Asia uh, to try to bust up some child sex traffickers. Uh, so it's it's a Batman book. Enjoy that. It's Andrew Vax. Love his writing. And But the big, big thing about this, it's a great, interesting story. Uh, I think you have to look at it as like an Elseworlds or a, a different unit. It's not the main Batman universe. Um, but it's still, it's a great, great story. But in the back, there is a, an essay about child sex tourism by a gentleman named David Heckler that really goes into what it is, the, the, the cost of it. I don't mean literally, this is how much you pay (laughs) the cost in humanity. Um, really some interesting stuff about that. And then there's notes So, like, end notes, but it's not just um, sources and things. There's actual notes that you can read. Uh, Like, in this case, note number 10. Thailand is often used by journalists, sociologists, and political scientists as a case study of sex tourism. And then it goes on a little bit. Um, So, you definitely want to read the notes. And then, after that, you have... Uh, this little thing for more information about what you can do about the situation. I don't know how up to date this is because this is a very old book. Uh, but it gives you contact information for ECPAT, which is End Child Prostitution in Asian Tourism, Human Rights Watch, and Don't Buy Thai, which is a um, like a boycott kind of thing. And it actually gives, I guess this tells you how old this is, actual addresses, physical addresses to, to write to or whatever, um, which I just found fascinating. So highly recommend this book. I sound like I'm doing a review. Uh, loved it when I read it, and I, I do recommend this to, to anybody. Um, it is disturbing because of the subject matter, but it's fantastic. All right, next up was The Unofficial X-Files Companion by N.E. Genji, Genji, G-E-N-G-E. I do not know how to pronounce that. And it's basically just what it sounds like. Uh, It covers the first two seasons of The (coughs) X-Files. Excuse me. And it gives an incredibly brief, if I remember correctly, a very, very brief synopsis of the episode, but uses that as a launching point to talk about different subjects that are broached in the episode, such as UFOs, uh, you know, genetics and mutations, um, men in black, urban legends, chupacabras, just all this different stuff. Very similar to, if I may, the book I'm currently reading, the whole uh, Science Of series by Meg Hoftel and Kelly Florence, where they use uh, movies and books as a launch point to discuss uh, certain things. And I, I've only read the introduction so far, so I can't specifically speak to this uh, for any examples. But very similar to how that uses, I know the first movie they talk about or mention in here is Wizard of Oz, and they're going to use that as a launching point to talk about certain things about witchcraft. Uh, This book, The Unofficial X-Files Companion, did that with 
episodes of the X-Files. There are a number of volumes, at least three volumes. Um, but this one covers the first two seasons. It's the kind of book I like. I dig it. Then we have Fantastic Four to Free Atlantis at Atlantis by Nancy A. Collins. And in this book, uh, Dr. Doom uh, basically takes over Atlantis. He assists with a coup, I believe. And I, I assume Atuma probably is trying to take over the throne of Atlantis, as always. Uh, but Dr. Doom wants these ancient Atlantean artifacts. So he, he assists, help oust Namor, the Submariner, from the Atlantean throne. Uh, the Fantastic Four save Namor's life, and then they team up with him to, well, to free Atlantis. Uh, a lot of fun. Nancy A. Collins, great writer. I'm a fa Fantastic Four is seems to be like a very divisive, or divisive, uh, comic book group of characters. I'm a fan, especially with a good writer. I know people that just think they're too, think they're hokey, think some. Uh, a guy I work with thinks they're like kid, they're kid friendly, so they're so it's you know it's not of interest to him. Um, but I, I dig the Fantastic Four, and I like this book. I wish I still had a copy. Then we have The Naked Son by Isaac Asimov. It is, I believe, book two of the Robot series, uh, which are mysteries, and. You have a human detective and a robot detective. The human doesn't like the robot. But in this book, uh, there's a planet. Let me look at my notes. Planet. Excuse me. Solaria. There are very few humans living on this planet. Uh, they're sort of isolationist. And they, they just like a single person or a couple, maybe a family, will just live completely by themselves, completely served by robots. And one of the most isolated is murdered in front of his robots. Uh, like, he only talked to people. His only contact with people was through a hologram. Uh, so, our human detective, our uh, robot detective, go to Solaria, Solaria, however you would say it, to try to figure out who killed this guy. And it's, could it have been one of his robots, which would defy the laws of robotics? Or could it be his, his girlfriend, I think it is, who he's never had contact with? Who is it? How did this person get killed? Um, love these books. Huge, huge fan of Isaac Asimov. Probably my favorite science fiction author. And uh, I like the mystery. I like the way he's written tons of mystery stories. And these science fiction mysteries with his characters, his writing, fantastic stuff. And then finally, the last book that I read in November of 1995. Had to think about what year I was talking about. I have a copy. Borrowed this from my mother uh, because I knew she had it. And I read it. The Columbo File, a case book by Mark Dewidziak. And this is, uh, what does it say? A complete and illustrated history of television's finest mystery series. And it is basically what it says it is. It's, it's an episode guide. It's a history of the show. So, of course, it starts out with the creation of the show and everything that went into bringing it to the screen. And then it has a very detailed episode guide uh, with very detailed plot synopses and... <laughs> It's like I had a seizure. Uh, plot synopses, uh, lists of, the, you know, the cast, the guest stars, little behind the scenes about each episode. Um, I love this kind of stuff. I love Columbo. So this was kind of a no-brainer uh, for something I was going to read. A lot of fun. Really enjoyed that book. Uh, but that was it. That was the last book that I read in November of 1995. That looks like seven books. Not too bad. A um, couple of nonfiction in there. So, do I have a question for this video? I mean, that is a question. I could just ask that. 
wouldn't make much sense, and I don't know how you would answer it. Um, let's. I'm just going to make this easy on myself. What TV show would you be most interested in reading this kind of book about? Um, where it's going to give you those behind-the-scenes details, uh, all the plots, all of that good stuff. I've read quite a few. That one, Buffy, uh, I have a five-book Babylon 5 one, one a, a book for each season. I've already reviewed the first one. Um, I like this kind of stuff. Uh, was there an angel? Did I read an angel one? I feel like I did. Um, I would like to have... Night Stalker, Kolchak the Night Stalker, that would be interesting to have, just a, there's probably one out there, I don't think I've read one, but I loved that show, and so I would love to see, kind of combine actually, the Columbo File and the Unofficial X-Files Companion, where you have the, the history of the show, you know, how it was made, how it came to the screen, very detailed uh, synopsis of the plots, guest stars, all that behind-the-scenes stuff, but then also getting into things that were in, that inspired the episodes. That would be really interesting to me. Um, have I read... I feel like maybe there's a Star Trek. I don't know. I had a Twilight Zone one for the original Twilight Zone. I think that's been on this list. Um, so those are just a few off the top of my head. What about you? What show? Basically... What show do you love so much that you would want to read this kind of book? Um, a great reminder of the episodes, details, of behind-the-scenes stuff. Basically, this is what we had before uh, DVDs and Blu-rays and all that stuff that gave us all the sort of behind-the-scenes stuff, the special features. We had books of special features. What show would you want one for? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual YouTube stuff. If you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is ericsmith5757. That's Eric with a K. E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I have for you this week, so until next week, read more books.